So in, in our F2 syllabus, we have variable cost variances. We have fixed cost variances. We have sales variances. The, that's all. You have six variable cost variance, two for material, uh, material price, material, material price variance and material usage variance, two for labor, labor rate variance and labor efficiency variance, and two for variable overhead, spending and efficiency. So two plus two plus two, six variances are variable cost variances. Then you have three variances for fixed cost and you've got three variances for sales. So what I'm planning to do that last time we did material and labor lecture, you people, I'm sure you have watched that. Today we are going to do questions for variable cost variances. This is our plan from, the, from your BPP kit. Then uh, fixed cost variances and sales variances. I've already uploaded the lecture. So you will watch this lecture for fixed cost and sales variances lecture during the week. And on Saturday we will meet and we will do questions from fixed and sales variances and our variance topic will be finished as far as F2 is concerned. And next week, then we will move to performance management, the last section. So let's start with here. We've got question number 14A1. We have picked it up from your BPP kits. Uh, it is always a good idea that you first read the requirement that what is the requirement. For example, they say, what are the material price and usage variance? Variances are not difficult at all. Actually, at F2 level, most of them, they look, they look quite similar. Yes, sometimes uh, fixed cost variances could be a little bit tricky with the help. I mean, but still not very difficult. So this is material price and material usage. Uh, let's read the question together and then I'll explain how to approach the question. A company manufactures a single product L for which the standard material cost is as follows. Uh, 14 kilograms. Uh, of material in one unit you use at three dollars so your cost material cost per unit is 42 so there are two things one is the quantity and one is the so this is your budgeted quantity this is your budgeted price during july 800 units of l were manufactured 12,000 kilogram of material were purchased for 33,600, of which 11,500 kilogram was issued now that's interesting you purchased 12,000 kilograms, but you used 11,500 because remaining material maybe is in your inventories. So you should remember that you have two variances, material price and material usage. Material price, you will always calculate based on quantity purchased and material usage variance, you calculate based on quantity used. So this is the only trick. I mean, in this question, this is the only trick. Otherwise, we know what to do. So if I have to find out material price variance, so our logic will remain same. Like we said that how much it should have been and how much it was based on actual quantity. Always remember, always, always remember whenever you do variances, you think about actual quantities. Okay. You never think about budgeted budget. You only calculate. They only give you budget for calculating some standard rates. After that, you go for actual quantity. So material price variance should be based on actual quantity purchased. Okay, I will write down here. Actual quantity purchased. So how much we purchased? 12,000. You say that 12,000 kilogram should cost at the rate of dollar three because your standard price. So you say actual quantity multiplied by standard price. My standard price was three dollars so twelve thousand kilogram we should have spent thirty six thousand and then we say twelve thousand kilogram did cost so how much it actually cost it cost you thirty three six hundred because you are spending less so it means that it is going it is favorable when you spend less so you should remember that we we, we discussed that there are two variances adverse and favorable Favorable variances are those which increase your profit. Adverse variance, they decrease your profit. So we say 36,000 minus 33,600. This is 2,400 and I would call it favorable, okay? Because you spent less. When you spend less, it is increasing profit. So this is our material price variance. Then we need to do material usage variance. 
and material usage variance we will say that actual quantity used how much you used now the thing is that you should be talking about how many units you made actual quantity you based on the you know the output so you should say 800 units of l should use at the rate of 14 kilograms okay because in one unit you were using 14 kilograms so you should be using 14 times 800 which is 11200 this is your standard actual quantity multiplied by standard and then you say that 800 units did use 11,500 kilogram. So you used more material. So if you are using more material, naturally speaking, it is adverse. So it is 300, but this is 300 kilograms. You must convert it to the to dollars and you say standard price. Standard price is dollar three. So you should be saying, you know, 300 times three. So it is 300 adverse variance. I would say 300 adverse variance like this because you spent more i mean you should be spending 11000 you should be using 11200 kilogram but you used 11500 kilogram so 300 kilogram used more it is adverse and what the cost of one kilogram is dollar three and of course you've got one material as favorable one as uh, you know adverse and the net variance would be 24 if, if they ask you now your answer is finished i mean logically your question is done you should say 2400 favorable 900 adverse i think this should be the choice option c 24 favorable 900 adverse now question is finished but let me tell you two things if they ask you what is the total material variance total material variance would be the difference of like 2400 minus 900 whatever it comes and by the way let's check how much it is 2400 minus 900 so i would say it is favorable okay total material variance they did not ask us but we are just doing it total material variance now one more thing i tell you um, in this case what is happening one material is favorable one is adverse and in many cases it will happen but somehow sometimes it is also possible that both are unfavorable you know how do i analyze this thing let me tell you how you do analysis in business uh, material price variance is favorable it came out favorable it means that you purchase cheap you know you probably are buying cheaper raw material and that cheap raw material ultimately is causing an, an adverse variance in the production department because usage was more i gave like example that you go and you buy you know cheap paint that paint is very thin so the procurement department will win because procurement manager will come in very happy that oh i made 2400 dollars savings but because of him another manager is at loss the the production manager is at loss so when you will ask him production manager you come in why is your variance unfavorable and you know he will say that see i got a bad quality of material procurement guy he made himself he just you know took himself out and he just put me in trouble so what we do usually we have different months like you've got here you know january okay let me write down i'm just telling you how it, it happens in real life you have march you have april so what is happening that here you've got your material price variance and here you have material usage variance so what was happening historically that material price variance was adverse 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 and suddenly it becomes favorable so and you would see that it was favorable favorable and suddenly it becomes adverse because in april what happened that this procurement guy he just thought that you know i'm having adverse variance let's go and find out some cheap raw material so he went to the market he bought some raw material which is cheap and uh, but when he brought that raw material and he gave it to the production department production departments suddenly their variance become adverse because the quality of the raw material was bad you know you can start with kitchen i have seen these variances 
working out in the kitchens of some hotels and, and restaurants. They have recipes of consumption of tomatoes and potatoes and meat. So when you start buying cheap quality of vegetable, cheap qualities of fruit, cheap qualities of you know, uh, meat, so then when they go into kitchen and they have to clean that fruit, vegetables and meat, a lot of waste comes out. And then what happens that suddenly the consumption of kitchen goes up. The procurement guy is very happy because he is buying cheap and he says, oh, I saved the money. But the production people, they become unhappy. So you need to create a balance between both of them. By the way, ultimately the business is winning because we are making 1500 favorable. The company is happy, but the individual performance of two different manager is like, you know, impaired. So you need to see how to create a balance. So because variance, when you calculate these numbers, calculating the numbers, the job is not finished. The next step is always to understand these numbers and to try to find out what is happening. So when you see this statement in front of you, you immediately realize that what the procurement guy he did, the price, material price, it means purchase department. So purchase department just went into the market in April. They found out some alternative material, which was cheap. They purchased it. The quality was not good. And suddenly the usage goes up. And the production manager will come in, start crying that, you know, this is not good. This is not fair with me. He's not giving me good raw materials. I'm going to stop production. I will not produce and stuff like that. And then interdepartmental conflicts, they start. So this is what is like the analysis of, of these variances you do. Anyways, uh, we move to the next question. Our next question is probably here. I just picked up some easy questions so that we, we, we make a humble start and then we start making situation complex. Next question is 14A.2 and 14A.3. And these are for labor. <clears throat> labor rate variance, labor efficiency variance. We know already what we need to do. Let's read the question. A company expected to produce 200 units of its product. So this is your plan, the bone in 2003. In fact, 260 units were produced. That's good. The standard labor cost per unit was $1.70, 10 hours into $7 per hour. So this was standard labor cost. The actual labor cost was 18,600 and the labor force worked 2,200 hours, although they were paid for 2,300 hours. So what is happening? First, you need to understand they worked for 22, but they were paid for 23 because there is 100 hours of idle times. I mean, they were sitting 100 because they were, you are paying them for more, but they were working less because the 100 hours they were sitting idle. So just forget about this 2300 hours for a moment, because when you will calculate labor efficiency, you will always talk about the hours worked. Yes, if they ask us to calculate idle rate variance, your idle time variance, then you would say 100 hours multiplied by whatever, whatever. Right now, the question does not say idle time variance. The question asks us labor rate variance and labor efficiency variance. Efficiency variance, we should be talking about 2200 hours. And rate variance, also what we paid will be. Actually, efficiency, we would say that 260 multiplied by how many hours they should work. And rate variance will be 2200 hours. Let's start doing it. Should be easy, should not be difficult. We say that uh, first we say labor rate variance, okay? Labor rate variance should should be easy. You should say that in how many hours you worked, and how many and and uh, how much you should have paid. So you should say that twenty two hundred hours because this is what you paid should cost at the rate of dollar seven because this is what you are paying. This is what your agreed rate was. 2200 hours times seven, 2200 times seven. This is what you should have paid, 15,400. Then we say 2200 hours did cost, and they cost how much? Uh, 18,600. The labor, actual labor was 18,600 and the labor force worked 2200 hours. So I put here 18,600. Um, 
okay but we okay we paid for 2300 hours we paid for 23 so you should talk about 23 because this is what you paid so you should say that 2300 hours so i make it 23 because this is where i made payment so 2300 hours should cost 16100 but 2300 hours did cost something more the difference is variance and that is adverse so you should say that labor rate variance okay so we should be talking about how many labor hours paid labor hour paid were 2300 and then you should be thinking about your efficiency variance so how many units did you make actually you made 2260 units you should say that 200 60 units this is what you did actual production 260 units should use at the rate of 10 hours because your standard is 10 hours 2600 hours okay and then you will write down here 260 units did use 2200 here you should use 22 please pay attention because they worked only for 22 so your labor efficiency should depend on the actual hours worked so you've got here some variance 26 22 you've got 400 and this is in hours okay again we have to multiply it with the standard cost so what is the standard cost per hour standard cost per hour was seven dollars so you would say that you know 400 times seven two thousand eight hundred so you actually are working less i mean you were supposed to finish the job in 2600 hours but you worked only 2200 hours so there is a favorable variance so this i would call it a favorable variance and i would call it you know labor efficiency variance and that is favorable 2800 again if they ask you that what is the net result total labor variance total labor variance will be a difference of these two um, by the way, you can actually, if they ever ask you, calculate labor rate variance. Labor rate variance. So total, that should be 28 favorable, 25 adverse, which means 300 favorable, if you have to calculate uh, 300 favorable. Okay, so this is... Uh, 14A4, usually this data you should remember that the data which is given for budgeted, we don't need to use it a lot. We only make it for comparison. We are talking always about actual quantities, okay? And actual quantities are of two things. One is about units and one is about the number of hours worked. Number of hour works, you will talk about the labor rate variance. Units multiplied by the standard rate, you will find out that what is the efficiency. For example, if we start with the easy thing always is rate variance, okay? So start with labor rate variance. Labor rate variance always comes a little bit easy. Material price variance, labor rate variance, they always come easy. So how many hours you worked actually? You have to think about actual hours, okay? So actual hours are 8280. You should say that 8280 hours should cost at the rate of, what is your standard rate? Now here you should talk about your standard rate. And how do you calculate your standard rate? The standard rate you will take from here. You know, you, you need this, this, the budgeted data is only there to calculate the standard rate. Like you have 11,550, this is your budget. And the purpose of budget is only this, 11,550 divided by number of hours, 5775. So this will give you your standard rate per hour. And that's why we need it. Otherwise we don't need it. So let me here calculate it is, 11,550 divided by 5,775, it is $2. So at $2, this is what how much it, it should have cost. So we say 8,280 times 2, it should be 16,560. And then we say 8,280 hours did cost, did cost uh, how much? It cost us, you know, 14,904. 
so you spent less so if you are spending less of course it has to be favorable so we say that our labor rate variance is 1656 favorable then we need to do the labor efficiency variance again you should find out that how many hours you were working okay so we talk about labor efficiency variance So next comes labor efficiency variance. Labor efficiency, we always start with like how many units we produced. So we produced 2070 units. And we should say 2070 units should you consume how many hours? So what was your budgeted hours? If you pay attention, your budgeted hours were like this, 5775 divided by 1925, okay? This is what you actually supposed. You suppose that 5775 hours you will work and you will make 1925 units. So you were actually making, a, how to say, a three hours. You were allocating three hours per unit. Should consume at the rate of three hours. So this is what how you should go. So budgeted data will help you to find out. Like in many questions, they tell you standard hours like when we were doing before this question here. They told us 10 hours and $7. So, so they gave you. In this question, they don't give you. You have to calculate yourself that you are allocating 5775 hours for making 1925 units. It means each unit is three hours. So you have to calculate yourself. So 2070 multiplied by three. Okay, why it is uh, taking this format? Let me. 6210 hours. You have, you should be using 6210 hours. You say 2070 units did use or did take how many hours? 8280 hours. Ah, oops, that's miserable. Is equal to 808280. Okay. So a lot of hours you are using. That's going to be a huge adverse variance. So I'm sorry, this formatting, I don't know, something has happened here. 2070 hours adverse. So this is how you should calculate. So always remember that this data, which is given to you as budgeted data, based on that, you should calculate your budgeted number of hours and the budgeted cost per hour. And that you should be using here. So you've got 2070 hours adverse, you worked more, and then you have a standard rate. My standard rate was, I think if I'm not mistaken, it was $2, standard rate was $2. So when you multiply it with two, so 2070 times two, it gives us, all of these columns are in percentages, I don't know, I need to set it up. So that is adverse. So you have, labor efficiency variance as 4140 adverse. Pretty simple, not difficult, but you just need to. So what you learned from this question, actually every question has a message for you. I mean, previous question, they you it, it uh, told you that maybe you have idle, uh, idle time. Here you, uh, it told you that you purchased 12,000, but you used only 11,500. So there was a little bit of trick. In this particular question, the trick is they did not give you, you know, hourly rate or they did not tell you how many hours you should be using, but you can calculate using your budgeted information. So we say that labor rate variance is 1656 favorable, efficiency variance is 4140 adverse, and that makes us 4140 adverse, this should be the answer, C option. Option three. And then we move to the next question, 14.A5. Now that's about uh, fixed overhead. Okay, fixed overhead, I will skip this question because fixed overhead questions I am leaving for our Saturday's class because you will watch those videos from fixed and sales variances. This is again, uh, one more question for, uh, you know, labor rate and labor efficiency variance. These are called basic variance. Even when you will move to your F5, still you need there, okay? And variances are very much popular topic in real life. I mean, every company 
is calculating variances. It is not possible that you are working in a company, in a business, and they don't have variances. They have variances. They should be calculating it. If they do it or not, I'm not sure, but they should be doing it. Because without variance, you never know that where are you doing good, where are you doing bad. So it's an important topic. So 14.14a.11, 14 the following information, it relates to labor costs for the past month for the past month and uh, what they what we have been given is again like you have your budget and you have your actual so ten dollar per hour production time fifteen thousand hours for time per unit is three hours and production units are five thousand units so it's like five thousand units you produce every unit should take three hours so budgeted time is fifteen thousand and then you have labor rate $10. Actual wages paid 176,000. Production was 5,500 units. Total hour works 14,000. So very simple. Based on this, I will calculate efficiency. Based on that, I will calculate labor rate. Very quickly, if you want to do it more quickly, okay, let's, let me just write down. I don't want to make it too long. Let's be very quick, okay? So we would say that 14,000 hours should be paid at you know, $10. Um, 14,000 hours you spent, total hours worked 14,000 and cost per hour is $10. So it should be making you 14,000 into 10. This is how much it should be and how much it was. You actually paid $176,000. That's a huge difference. So you are actually having an adverse variance of 36,000. Straight away, 36,000 is your labor rate variance, okay? I just did it quickly. I'm, I'm sure that we are in, in that position that you would understand what I did. Labor rate variance adverse because how many hours you worked? 14,000, okay? Actual hours, 14,000. Standard rate was 10. 14,000 hours should cost 140,000, but 14,000 hours did cost 176. That's an adverse variance. Then you talk about efficiency variance and I would call it labor efficiency variance. Let's call it like this. Efficiency variance, how many units you made, okay? 5,500. One unit should take how many hours? Three. So I put here 5,500 units times three. This is how much you should be spending, 16,500 hours. But you spent how much? So you say that 1,500, uh, 5,500 units did take only 14,000 hours. So here you get favorable. So you um, subtract this much. So you've got 2,500 hours favorable. Now remember this is hours. And then you multiply it with your standard rate, your standard cost, which was $10. And you say that, you know, 2,500 times 10, $25,000 favorable. Now this company surely needs to work a lot on your on, on their variances. Now I tell you what do I mean by that? Um, so this is the answer 36,000 adverse 25,000 favorable. I think it is going to be answer choice D. So let me first this is answer choice D question is done. But now let me tell you if I see this scenario, how do I see that? in real life. I would, if somebody asked me to make an interpretation of this situation, I would say that your standards are not good because you are making huge variances, you know, it's like 36,000. So you are 36,000 away and you are not away from this 1 million. Your total budget was 176, okay? Uh, if I consider, let's suppose, how much we, 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 how much we thought about that? We thought about that 140,000 we ended up 176,000, okay? So if I consider you made a change of 36,000 over 140,000, this was your budget, and I multiply it with 100. I'm just doing it in terms of calculating percentage. So it means that my this variance is 25% was the difference, okay? 25% difference you are making. That's a huge thing. And the same thing is happening here. You've got 25, you've got like 2,500 hours over a difference of 16,500 times 100. 
So that's also uh, something like 15%. It's a huge, 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 huge difference. Your planning is not good. You know, either this is huge difference. So I should be knocking down these people or probably they will come in and say that your budget is not proper. Please go and revisit your budget because you made a budget. You remember standards. We said old standard, basic standards. Maybe these are basic standards. Maybe these standards were made several years ago. I mean, this type of variances with a 25% difference or 15% difference is not acceptable at all. You may, you may come up that, okay, we, we went up by 2% or we, or we went down by 3%. That's, that makes sense. I mean, we can think about it. Okay, there is some, you know, uh, the real and the forecast are never correct. The forecast is always a little bit different than the, what you plan or what you thought. But with 25% or with 36% difference, that's totally unacceptable. We should be, first we should talk about our budget. Let's see. And, and to me, it looks like that it's a budgeting problem because this goes up so much. The other one goes down so much. I think that there is some serious problem with the standards which this chose before they prepared budgets. So you, you will revise your standards and probably you need to do some control here as well. But this situation is very critical. And most probably the reason is standard. Okay, you move down to question number, I don't know, 14.3, 14.14 and etc. Again, this was direct material variance and uh, direct labor variance. Let's do this one also, 14.3 to 14.15. Um, budget actual uh, based on budget you will make your standards you have direct material direct labor variable overhead and you have got actual material actual labor and actual overhead what was the total direct material variance so number of unit produced are same so direct material variance if you see in this question what do you see the direct material variance is there any variance What is a direct material variance? You, pro, you had a budget of 2200, okay? And 10, so what is your material standard? Let me call it like this. And you pay attention, they are not asking you direct material usage variance or direct material rate variance. They are asking you direct material total variance. What is my material standard? My material standard was that I would spend a cost of 110,000 and we would make units which are 2200. It means that material per unit is 110 divided by 2200. So your material per unit should be $50. Okay, $50. Now this is the same situation which I said to you before that you can calculate material variance total directly without usage and without rate. So this was my material standard. I call it material standard is $50 per unit in general, which includes the rate and the usage. And now you say that 2000 units should use at the rate of, you know, um, at the rate of $1.50. So 2000 units, if you produce, this is your actual output is 2000. It should be 100,000. And 2000 units did use 110,000. So you've got here $10,000 adverse. So what you need to do from this question, the lesson which we learned from this question is that we need to calculate our material standard, which is $50 per unit. So you have got $10,000 material variance and that's total material variance. I'm not saying usage or uh, price, whatever. Similarly, you talk about direct labor variance. Now you should say, what is your labor standard? Okay. The same way, what you budgeted, you said that my labor cost should be how much we, we can, we, we said $286,000 and units were 
2200. So I would say that labor cost per unit, labor cost per unit should be 286 divided by 2200, $130 of labor in each unit. So now you see what is happening. You made 2000 units in actual. So you say 2000 units should, uh, should have labor cost. Let me use like this, should have labor cost at the rate of dollar 130. 130 is my labor standard, 2000 times 130. It should be 260,000. And then we say that 2000 units did use labor. How much they use? They use actually 286,000. And you'd see the difference. No, 280,000 actually, I'm sorry. Not 286, 280. So there is a difference of 20,000. And again, that is an adverse variance. So you've got labor rate variance. Uh, you should be using the total, the cost should have been 260, but the cost, it came up with 280. So you spent more, that's an adverse variance.